Uh, I want to share a couple of things with you before we pray tonight. Uh, we want to look over the next few evenings, and we're going to break it up simply because of uh, the time constraints that we have. We do have service tomorrow, but we'll be praying uh, through the latter part of that service. I want to look very quickly, uh, we're going to break this up over the next week, on uh, the seven steps to answered prayer. And uh, learning, obviously, how to pray is one of the most important things that any believer can ever do, is uh, learning how to pray accurately. And a believer can't be a success uh, fulfilling God's purpose in our lives if we don't know how to pray according to biblical principles. And so, as we look at these principles of prayer, uh, we're going to get them in our heart and uh, practice them in our own private prayer life and see what uh, will happen as we do. Amen? Amen. And uh, step number one, when you are beginning to pray, step number one is decide what you want from God and find the scripture or scriptures that definitely promise you those things. Decide what you want from God and then find the scriptures or scripture that definitely promise you those things. Uh, so many times, people are indefinite in their praying. Uh, you, 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 you have, there has to be a, definite, a definiteness to it. Because again, Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 8, tells us that we are to present our prayers, prayer and petition with thanksgiving. And that petition is a specific request. All right? And I don't want to be indefinite in what I'm praying about. Uh, that's why Brother Hagin used to say, he said, I would rather folks only pray two or three minutes with definite prayer than to pray two or three hours and not know what they're praying for. All right? So sometimes uh, people can be indefinite in what they're asking for. Now, I've got to pray according to the Word. We're still on step number one, but I've got to pray according to the Word. Uh, you've got to realize the importance of God's Word in prayer, uh, the importance of the Word of God. We know that faith begins where the will of God is known, and we also know that God's Word is His will. So when I find scriptures that definitely promise the things I'm asking for, then I'm praying the will of God in that situation. Uh, if the scripture doesn't promise you those things that you're desiring, then you don't have any business praying for those things. If the scripture doesn't promise it, you don't need it. You know, uh, that's why I've, I've heard people say things like, well, you know, but you, know, you talk about having what you desire, and what if somebody desires 10 million oil wells? Well, you can't find where you're promised 10 million oil wells in the Bible. So you don't have any scripture to stand on for that. You know? And, hallelujah, the reason a lot of people are not praying with confidence and faith is they're not finding scriptures that prove that God wants them to have the things they're desiring. And that produces confidence in your life. That produces confidence in your prayer life. Is when you're finding those things that God promised you in the Word of God and praying along those lines. Hallelujah. And so a lot of people hope it is God's will, but they can't know for sure. And because faith begins where the will of God is known, then the, the Word of God is His will. Now, once you find the Scriptures that promise you what you desire from God, you've got to get those Scriptures firmly fixed in your heart, not just in your mind. It's not just enough to know it's in the Bible. It's got to be firmly fixed in my heart. Hallelujah. And to do that, you've got to meditate on the Word. Very familiar scripture is Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, where he told Joshua that this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it night and day. 
and then your way would be prosperous and you would have good success. Now that comes from meditating. And remember that the word meditate is the Hebrew word hagas, haga, H-A-G-A-H, and it means to mutter, to talk to oneself, to speak under your breath. Basically, talk to yourself. All right, that's meditation. Meditation uh, can be where you're just sitting quietly before God, meditating on things, but that's really just thinking on things. Meditation requires saying something, all right, because I'm instilling an image. There's nothing that can instill an image of success in your heart or in your spirit like your tongue. David said, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And so while I'm, while I'm speaking, while I'm saying things, I'm writing on the tables of my heart. Amen. Another translation says that you may be able to deal wisely in the affairs of life. So success in any area, and that would certainly include praying, comes from meditating on God's Word. And that way you'll build up God's Word in your consciousness and in your spirit. Hallelujah. Now, there are different things that we're believing for. Uh, we've got requests up here that people have turned in. We're believing for family members, for children. So let's look at some scriptures that specifically promise us that. Acts chapter 16 and uh, verse 30. This is when Paul and Silas were in the Philippian jail and the earthquake from the Lord set them free. And the jailer came in and uh, fell down before them. And in verse 30, notice what he said. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What do I have to do to be born again? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved and your house. Amen. So I have specific scripture that says my house will be saved. Not just because I got saved, but because I got saved, I have the opportunity to share it with them. But I can claim that scripture. My house will be saved. Now I've got to meditate on that until there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that everyone in my house will be saved. Amen. Do you see that? Now, Proverbs 11, verse 21. This is one of my favorite scriptures concerning victory where our families are concerned. And it says this, That though hand join in hand, and understand what that means, even though the wicked, even though they join up and take sides together against you, though hand join in hand, the wicked will not be unpunished. Notice this, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Well, the seed of the righteous is your child. So they shall be, shall is covenant language. It means without a doubt, shall, it's a promise. Now remember what Titus said about God? He said, you put your trust in God who cannot lie. You understand that? When God said shall, he cannot lie. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered because God cannot lie. And when you go to prayer, you don't pray for the salvation of your children. You pray according to the Word of God. The seed, my seed, shall be delivered. I don't care what they need to be delivered from. Amen. Now, Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 25. Glory to God. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. But I will contend with him that contends with you, and I will save your children. Now that's, that's the promise of the king concerning your children.
I put, that's the oath of the king about my kids. In other words, there are captives of mighty people that will be taken away. There are those that have become the prey of the terrible and they will be delivered. Notice this, but I will contend. Whatever is trying to take your child, God is contending with it right now. And the Bible says about the God we serve, He's a man of war. You understand? He doesn't take this lightly. Any, anything that, that is trying to bring anything other than His will into your life, He's standing personally against it. Why? Because I've given him license through my prayer. You are contending with them that contend with me and you're saving my children. Now I've given him license. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory. Now, look at Isaiah 54. Verse 13. And all your children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you will not fear, and from terror, for it will not come near you. Now why will I not fear and why will I not be in terror? Because I'm, he's talking about my children. All my children will be taught of the Lord. No reason to fear them going to hell. All my children will be taught of the Lord. No reason to be in terror about their lives. All my children will be taught of the Lord. Yeah, but they're doing this and doing that. I don't care. All my children will be taught of the Lord. You have to obtain an IDC degree in the Holy Ghost. You know what that means? You know what an IDC degree is? I don't care. I don't care what's going on in their lives. All my children will be taught of the Lord. Yeah, but they're addicted. All my children will be taught of the Lord. Yeah, but they're living in sin. All my children will be taught of the Lord. It's just their tough luck they's born to you. Because they're not going to hell. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you understand that? You just need to tell that child that's living wrong, just get ready to see me in heaven because that's when you're, go you're going to see me there because you're going. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. Look at Isaiah 65, verse 23. Now this is talking about, you can take this for you and your wife, you can take this for you, yourself, if you're a single parent, whatever the case may be. And notice what it says. They shall not labor in vain. Now watch. Nor bring forth children for trouble. Why? They are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Now, I'm not bringing forth for trouble. I didn't bring children into this world to have trouble. You understand? No trouble. Tell your neighbor, no trouble with my kids. No with my kids. Hallelujah. Now, see, I have Bible to go to God on that about. Amen. Now, look at Hosea chapter 2. And verse 6. This is what I declared and still declare over one of my children. It seemed like they'd do good for a while and then they'd back off. But remember, we're finding scripture about what we're praying about. Verse 6, Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way. And I put that child's name in there. I will hedge up their way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. My child will not find their way back to addiction. My child will not find their way back to sin. And she shall, notice this, follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. Well, my children just hanging with the wrong people. No, they won't. They're not going to overtake them. 
They're not, they're not going to overtake them. They're not going to find them again. And she shall seek them, look, but not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. I'm going to go back to the things of God. Why? For then was it better with me than now. Amen. Amen. My child's going to say it's better when I was serving God Amen. than it is now. Amen. Amen. Now see, that's a definite request. This is what I'm expecting. Amen. And, and then faith is born of what you expect God to do. If your expectation is low, your faith will always be low. Because faith is born of great expectation. When you're expecting great from God, you get great from God. Hallelujah. Do you see that? Hallelujah. So, now, let me give you uh, step number two before we pray. Step number two in receiving answered prayer is this. Ask God for the things you want and believe you receive them. So you have a definite request, and now you're asking God, you found the scriptures, now you're asking God for what you want, and you believe that you receive them. Now certainly God knows what we need, even before we ask. He said He did. But He still said for us to ask Him. Because in, 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 in Mark chapter 6, verse 32, He said, Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But then in John 16, 24, He said, Ask and you shall receive. Hallelujah. I've had people that say, uh, you know, well, uh, I need God to do this. Well, you know, have you asked him? Well, he knows what I need, right? But he said to ask. Because the proof of desire is asking. If you're not asking, you don't desire it. The proof of desire is asking. And remember what he said. He said, I will do whatever you ask in my, the Father will do whatever you ask in my name. That word ask, it, in, the, in the Greek, it literally means to demand. Whatever I demand in the Father's name. Now there are people that say you don't go and demand to God. Then why did He tell us to demand? Amen. Amen. See, I don't know about you, but I don't have time to play when I pray. If I'm going to spend time praying, I need answers. It's not just a religious exercise. I'm not marking time. God, God is not pleased with me because I pray in the morning. God's not pleased if I pray two hours or three hours or if I only pray 30 minutes. 30 minutes of prayer doesn't please God less than four hours of prayer. God is perfectly pleased with me because He's perfectly pleased with the sacrifice of Jesus. Anytime you turn something into a work, you lose the effectiveness of the thing. Because now you're relying on something other than God's grace and God's love to provide for you. If you think that praying is what pleases God, then you're never going to get an answer to prayer. Faith pleases God. And the only way you can have faith is to just accept God's word for what it is from cover to cover all the way through. So God's not more pleased with me because I pray more than you and he's not less pleased if I pray less than you. But he did demand that I ask. Do you understand that? And then you ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you, he said, of my Father which is in heaven. Is that what he said? So you go to the Father, and you ask him for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, and whatever it is, my Father will do it for you. That's powerful. And, and I studied that out in the Greek one time, and the, 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 literal, the literal meaning of that is this. Even if God doesn't have it, He'll make it. 
Now, there's nothing he doesn't have. But he's, he's putting such an emphaticness there that even if there was something I don't have, I'll make it. I'll just create it. Amen. Yeah, but I need a job. They say there's no job. God will create you a job. Amen. God will have them create a position to give you a job. How do you know that? Because it's happened to me. They created a position to give me a job. Amen. And they'll do it for you. So tell your neighbor, I'm going to ask and I'm going to receive. Oh, hallelujah. So you ask and believe that you receive. Hallelujah. Do you see that? In uh, the book of John chapter 16, I'm going to take just a minute and teach on this. Is this all right? And verse uh, 23. John 16, now notice this, in that day you shall ask me nothing, truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever, now see these are words you need to pay attention to, that's where you don't just read your Bible, you read your Bible, whatsoever you shall ask. The Father in my name, He will give it you. Now, notice what it doesn't say. He'll think about it. He might say yes, He might say no, He might say wait. That's how religion teaches you that God is that there's three possible answers to your prayers yes, no, and wait. Huh, poor old Jesus, He didn't know that. Right? Our model for prayer didn't know that there were three answers. Huh. No. He said, whatever you ask. So who's got to ask? Who's got to ask? And what, and, and what are you allowed to ask for? Now, remember from our first point, whatever you find in the Word that covers what you're believing for? Right? Whatever you ask in my name, the Father will what? Give it to you. Do you see that? So did you ask? Yes, pastor, I've asked. Okay, then the Father's going to give it to you. You see, I, I, I understood one time long ago that I was just ignorant enough to believe that God would do exactly what he said. That, that settled it for me. When I looked at my wife and said, I said, Michelle, God will do exactly what he promised in his word. Amen. That settles the issue. Then verse 24, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive. Now wait a minute. Ask and then there are three possible answers. No. Ask and you what? Receive. Shall receive. Now why? Why are we going to receive? Because we ask. According to his word. And he said, I want to give it to you. Why? What's the last part of that verse? That your joy may be full. So without answered prayer in my life, my joy is not full. And he said, you ask in my name and I'm going to give it to you that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. See, so that kind of flies in the face of that religious teaching that says, well, God isn't about, you know, you having whatever you want. Well, th those scriptures right there just say that's wrong. Amen. Amen. Do you see that? And he said it's this simple. Whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, the Father will give it to you. So your joy can be full. Oh, glory to God. Do you see that? Hallelujah. Now, look at Matthew chapter 7. I promise we're going to pray in a minute, but I got to get, I got to get this to you. Because if we're going to pray, we're going to pray right. And I'm not saying you don't pray right. I'm going to make sure, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Because again, I don't, listen, I don't know everything, but I know what it was like to labor for years praying wrong. You know? And just kind of throwing up a crapshoot prayer. Come on, sevens. <laughs> right? There was a lot of that. Amen? Then I found out how to load the dice. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Found out how to do it right. <laughs> some of y'all looking like you've thrown some loaded dice before. I'm glad God saves people. Amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and there are three possible answers. No, ask, and it, now, I tell you these things so you'll, you'll think about this when you read these scriptures. It is the implied subject of whatever you're praying for. Salvation of my children. Ask and it shall be given. Do, do you understand that there's no room for this not to happen to the believer? This is going to happen. Because you've asked, and, and, and the, 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 we, it's understood that we ask in His name, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Right? Now, understand, that's not talking about waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and seeking. That means as you ask, and you seek after the things of God, you're not just going to be seeking and seeking and seeking. You seek, you're going to find. You start seeking the answer, you're going to find the answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. Why? For everyone. Would that be you? Yes. Everyone that asketh gets three possible answers. No? That's not what it says? It says, everyone that asketh, what happens to them? They receive. He that seeks, what happens? And to him that knocks, what happens? Amen. Glory to God. Well, it doesn't look like it's open, but you asked for it, right? You asked for it to be open, so it'll be open. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful, isn't it? Hallelujah. Now, look at Mark 11. And I know I've been saying this a lot, but I want to encourage you to get this works mentality out of your mind. Now, here's what I mean by that. Whenever you turn anything into just a work and you're just doing it because you think that's what you have to do, you just lost the effectiveness of it. Faith and works never, listen, here, here's what I'm saying. There are works that go with your faith. But if you're just doing works, it's not faith. But yet you can't have faith without works. Because faith without works is dead because they're alone. But works alone are not faith. If you're just praying because you think that's what you have to do, you can never pray in faith. You're in faith and then you pray. Because remember this, remember this equation. You plus Jesus equals fulfillment. You plus works, you plus effort, you plus self-effort equals failure. It's always you and Christ. And when you put you and Christ in there, it's the finished work. All the way through the epistles, it says everything is by grace through faith. So God's answering my prayers, not because I've never missed the mark, not because I've never failed, not because I've never made a mistake, or not because I've even never sinned. But because when I missed it, I repented and I came to him with his word. And the Bible says he cannot deny himself. 
can't do it. Amen. When I go to him with his word, he can't deny it. Amen. Yeah, but what if a person's living in sin? If a person's living in sin, they're not going to God. That's just the way it is. You understand what I'm saying? Well, but Pastor, you know, I missed it. I feel like I missed it the other day. Okay, did you repent? Yeah, I repent. Okay, now go to God. If we sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is that what it said? We have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. I have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. I have someone who's my advocate in heaven. Amen. That's beautiful. When you get up in the morning, you pray. When you pray tonight, you go, to, you go knowing that you're loved by the Father, that you're cared for by Jesus, that God wants to have communion with you. God wants to have fellowship with you. He's never, His hands are never like that to you. They're always like this to you. He's always welcoming and open. He might correct you. He might have to tell you when you've been wrong. He will allow the Holy Spirit to convict you for wrongdoing in your life. But the end result of that conviction will always be overwhelming love from your Father. Always. Amen. Tell your neighbor, tell the kids, God's not mad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now tell them, say, tell the kids, tell the kids. I love them. I love God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We, got, we got shirts made up like that one year. Tell the kids I love them, God. Amen. Now let me finish here because we got to pray. But notice this. Chapter 11, verse 23. Truly I say to you that whosoever, now do you see that word again? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Whosoever will have whatsoever that he saith. Therefore, now remember the word therefore is there, so that you can see what went before it. Therefore, in the light of whosoever shall have whatsoever, therefore I say unto you, now notice this, what thing soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now why do you believe when you have went to prayer that you've already received them? Because you've already said to the mountain, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he saith. So, you, for instance, where your children are concerned, you've spoke to that situation and you've said, I believe in the name of Jesus that my children are saved and set free and living for God. Okay, you've spoke to that mountain that's holding those children back. Now, when you go to pray, don't you go pray and ask God to save your children. You've already believed you received. Therefore, when you pray, believe that you receive. See what it says? Therefore, therefore, when you pray, believe you receive. You cannot believe you have received until you've spoke to the thing. Amen. So you, you go to prayer and you believe that you receive. And when you're done praying, that's it. When you're done praying about that situation, that's it. From then on, it's, remember, everything by prayer and definite request with thanksgiving. So I've made definite requests. I believe I receive. And from then on, thank you, Lord, you heard me when I prayed. Now let me give you an example, and, we'll, and we're going to go to prayer. When Jesus, when they came to Jesus, and whether you know it or not, I love the two, three things that I love to teach on the most is faith, number one, redemption, and prayer. I love to teach on those three subjects. But now, I'm not bragging on that. I'm just saying that's, that's, that's right in my wheelhouse. When Jesus, when they came to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, he that you love is sick. Lazarus is sick. Right? And Jesus, the Bible says, that he went on another day's journey. And then they caught up to him, and they said, uh, he died. Jesus stayed another day. So now he, he's sick, right? He went on another day. 
Then he stays there a day. Then they said he died and he stayed another day. Now it's three days, right? And then he says, we got to go back to, uh, to Bethany and uh, got to go see Lazarus. They said, oh, he said, because he's sleeping. And those uh, lightning fast mind of those disciples, they said, well, Lord, if he's sleeping, he's doing good. Well, now notice something. Jesus said, okay, he says he said plainly, Lazarus has died. Now, you got to understand, Jesus never denied the situation. Now, I'm going to show you something, though, why it didn't matter. He gets there to Bethany, and Martha meets him and says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Right? Jesus looked at her and said, wait, wait, wait a minute. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me will never die. She said, oh, I know he's going to live again in the resurrection. Right? Then Mary heard he was there. And so she came running. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Didn't I tell you, if you believed me, your brother would live again? Actually, I got those two backwards. He told Martha, didn't I tell you, if you believed me, your brother would live again? Well, I know he's going to live in the resurrection. Then Mary came. Jesus said, wait a minute, Mary. I am the resurrection and the life. And then it says, he groaned in his spirit. And Jesus wept. Well, now, wait a minute. And it says, the Jews said, now you know how spiritual those Jews were. Oh, look how he loved him. I wonder what he was groaning about. He was groaning because they didn't get it. He was weeping because they didn't get it. When he stood before the tomb, I'll prove to you. When he stood before the tomb, he prayed. He said, Father, I'm not praying so anyone else will hear me. I'm not, or I'm not praying for my sake. I'm praying for those sake that, he, that hears me. And he said, because I know that you always hear me. And I know that you have heard me. He already prayed about it. It didn't matter that Lazarus was dead. He had already made up his mind. It was already done. He was going to go raise Lazarus from the dead. He had already asked the Father to do that. He didn't pray for Lazarus. Read that prayer. He never once prayed for Lazarus to be raised from the dead. He prayed and told the Father, I know that you always hear me. And then he said, roll the stone away. And he commanded Lazarus to come forth. Never asked God to raise him from the dead. Commanded for him to come out. He believed he received. Three days previous, he had asked for that and believed he received it. Didn't matter if he was dead. He believed he received. Your faith, when you believe that you receive, your faith is capable. It is capable of overcoming anything that you're facing. Because there's no force in hell that can overcome a man or woman that has believed they received. Just will not happen. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, a couple things to keep in mind tonight. They, uh, I got word this evening they uh, have taken uh, Sister Cindy Bell's husband to the hospital. Apparently he had a heart attack. And uh, so uh, I don't know where he's at yet. She will certainly let me know. But uh, so we're believing for total restoration in his body, total health and healing in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. And uh, I uh, spoke to my good friend Bill Horn today with uh, Dr. Jerry Savell's ministry, Chariots of Light. And uh, they, uh, he sent me a, uh, the report and they are believing God this year. Last year, they were believing God for 30,000 souls in 2015. And in actuality, 30,153 people came to Jesus. Uh, they also documented praying with more than 40,000 people one-on-one. 40,177, to be exact. And so our uh, Chariots of Light goal this year... I say our chariots of lights go with 
I'm a chariot. Our chariot of lights goal is 100,000 souls for 2016. And, and we'll make it. Yes, we will. And, and that, is, that is just one person every day winning one person to Jesus. Amen. And so uh, we're believing God for that. Brother Hagen said in 1997, he said, taking time to pray in the Spirit, taking time to pray in other tongues will get you tuned up. It will edify you and get your tongue hooked up to your spirit. So that then he who dwells in your spirit can give you utterance. Then he takes over and you speak out what he says, not what you think. Speak out what he wants. So you got to take time praying in the spirit. Get your tongue hooked up to your spirit. And then you can speak out what he wants. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to enter into prayer tonight for the next little bit. And uh, again, uh, however you pray, whether you walk or kneel or sit or however you do it, but uh, we want to enter into prayer. Uh, we want to keep believing for our salvation of our loved ones. And remember, we're being thankful about this now. All right. We have believed that we received that on the first night. And now we're going to walk this out and you're going to see them saved. I mean, we've already received them saved. We're going to see them saved. Amen. By the power of God. And uh, keep uh, Brother Aaron in your prayers. And uh, uh, we're going to see what God will do. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So let's enter into prayer tonight and believe God over this next little bit that God will do exactly what he said. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you are my very own Father and I'm your very own Son. I thank you, Father, that according to your word, I have the right, the blood bought, the Bible right to enter into your throne room boldly and find grace to help me in the time of need. Lord, I thank you, Father. I thank you for the manifestations of your great grace in our lives. I thank you for the manifestation of your love. I thank you, Father, that according to the scriptures that we have read tonight, Father, you said that if we ask anything in your name, that the Father would give it to us. You said that anything that we believe that we have received, that we will have. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank